Oh, oh my here? God. This is crazy. Middleofnowheregaming.com. Everybody go to that website. Say we sent you. Yeah, get that you traffic find, I bet they're really good at Minecraft. They're probably the antithesis of us. This is the Middle of Nowhere Gaming Podcast. Welcome into to episode 56 of the Middle of Nowhere Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Osborne, and today I am joined by both of my partners in crime, the Nintendo Ninja, Lou. How you guys doing, everyone? He's actually That's more toned down than normal. Both people. You are both of them? Because I, I don't know, I guess I could have said both names at once, because then I would go together better. Anyways, and the Destiny Demigod, Miles. I deny any liabilities in terms of being his partner in crime. What? No, man, you signed the contract. We have it in paper. I could give it to the police. I didn't sign anything, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not admitting to forging your name, but I may have done something to you guys make this hear possible. A little bit of legal facts? Sure. You cannot actually sign a contract to do something illegal. Yeah, that sounds oh, about right. That's um makes sense. That it's void. Uh, on its face for illegality and for other reasons, but you just don't, you can only contract to do something you have a right to do, and if it's illegal, you don't have the right to do it. That is what I learned in Contracts 101, and don't rely on that, or else I could never work. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, but that, but that, uh, that assumes that you're signing the contract to do something illegal, and not just signing that you, you were signing up to do it, or something, like, like that you're being held responsible to commit a crime. Or something like that, because then that would be where it's void. That you don't actually have to commit the crime because you signed a paper. That's where it, it doesn't work. Anyways. Yes. <laughs> so, anything worth mentioning this week? Um, I went to Fright Fest. What the fuck's that? Uh, for those of you in the New York, New Jersey, et cetera, et cetera region, you may know Six Flags Great Adventure, which is our decent theme park. <laughs> Um, decent is the best way to describe it. It's okay. I, I will enjoy going there on occasion, but in October, in order to keep business going, they have something called Fright Fest and it induces people to go out and actually do these theme parks when it's like 40 degrees outside. Um, and what happens is people dress up in scary things and do costumes and face paint and all that good stuff. And then they scare you after 6 PM. They just walk around and, uh, walk around with chainsaws and stuff like that and becomes a giant haunted, um, theme park, which is cool. But the reason this ties into video games is because they were doing a Call of Duty promotion there, which had by far the best pre-order, uh, thing that I've ever seen. What was it? If you pre-ordered it there, then on release day, you could go and you get free entry to the park, which is normally 40, 50 bucks. Um, and you just go there. They do a big promotional event. They're doing like a big giveaway thing. And um, then you get all extra season pass DLC. Like it was some crazy wow. bundle of stuff. And I was like, that is totally worth me pre-ordering if I lived in the state of New Jersey, which I don't currently. Huh. That's a good deal. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I... That's a frightening deal. <laughs> And it um, begins. <laughs> <laughs> we guys, we still have like a week uh, till Halloween, so let's hold off on the, the, are we the new, Halloween jokes. Are we doing another zombie podcast? Did oh yeah, I forgot we did that last year. The the Google what? Hangout. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, we could do something, something you know, you know something. We'll dress up in costumes and not make it a video podcast with the exact same. We just describe. <laughs> <laughs> I will describe my costume best I can. Do you guys know what you're doing? No, I'm uh, not doing anything. I don't, I don't dress uh, up. I don't do anything for Halloween. I'm doing a group thing. You will. I'll, I'll eat candy. I'm oh gonna... my god. I just realized I live in a neighborhood with children now. I can go out and beat them and steal their candy. Oh my god. You, <laughs> I think you're see, supposed to be do you, the. Do you remember the crime? Do you remember the crime thing you didn't, you didn't sign a contract for? Hey, <laughs> like you this just is admitted, just hearsay. you just admitted to doing <laughs> this something. Is hearsay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boss. Um, now I'm, I think I'm just gonna watch scary movies and play scary games. So, 
That's what I did last year. This year it's on a Friday, right? Yeah. I'm up. Yeah, I'm going out. Am I doing all night stream of a scary game? That'd be cool. What game? I don't know. <laughs> it's got to be something that you haven't done before. I would say The Evil Within if I wasn't already playing it. So right. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. Try Lone Survivor. See if it scares you. I, what What are consoles it on? PS4. Okay, maybe then. It's um, like an 8-bit indie horror then, game. Then no. <laughs> I, I will, cannot I, be scared in 8 bits. It doesn't <laughs> matter what it is. Yeah, I'm not going to play 8-bit. Um, but speaking of, uh, of The Evil Within, might as well talk about it now. Um, if you notice that my energy level may not be up to par this week, it's it's because I pulled an all-nighter on Sunday playing uh, The Evil Within. Dude, oh my god, that game is Resident Evil 4.5. It's it's everything we've wanted in the next Resident Evil game since Resident Evil 4. Uh, Shinji Mikami did an amazing job with this game. Uh, it has its faults like any game or any Resident Evil game or, you know, whatever. But it is, it's everything we, we loved about the old Resident Evil games. Uh, it has got some really, really, really scary parts, really frightening parts. Um, and then just normal, you know, story, fucked up, weird, don't understand anything kind of stuff. Uh, but, uh, the, my biggest problem with this game though is, the first few chapters are fairly short. They're anywhere between like 30 minutes and an hour. And some of the middle chapters, like the ones I've been on the past few days, 8, 9, 10, 11 ish or whatever, those chapters are all like at least two hours, sometimes three yeah. hours. And, and it just depends on how quickly you go through it, you know, and you could run through it, obviously, and make it through really, really fast. But if you take your time, explore everything, get all the items to craft everything, kill all the enemies so you can get upgrade stuff, um, it could take you a freaking incredible amount of time. And you can't just save anywhere. You have to get to a save room. And so if you die somewhere, you have to backtrack a lot. Um, but it's just, it's some of those times that were the long chapters by the time you get to the end of the chapter, you're just like, thank God I can fucking take a break now for a minute and not be like on edge for three hours. It's just, it's exhausting beating chapters in the middle of the game, but it's still really, really good. It feels, oh God, it's, it's really good. I'm enjoying it. Someone's going to die from that. Yeah. Just heart three attack? hours of their heart. Yeah. Three hours of their heart just going. They have like, I don't know what normal beats per minute is, but I mean, two times that. Yeah, I'm I'm not gonna lie though. Like those three hours where you're just on edge, um, they'll you'll get a few minutes of break or whatever somewhere in there, and then something will happen that's not even scary. It's a loud noise, like a door slam or something move or something. You know, it's just some loud ass noise that's not supposed to be scary or it's not supposed to do that much, and it literally will make you jump out of your seat. Like, I felt like my heart stopped a few times because I got so scared, just, like, startled scared. Uh, oh, my God. Lou, are you ready for the uh, Courtney Memorial Podcast? <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. <sighs> we'll see how the rest of the game goes. I'm I'm actually, like, in the middle of Chapter 10 or 11 right now. Cause Out of how many? It's such a long one. Um, 15, I think. Okay, oh, so you're, you're almost there. Yeah, I'm getting close to the end. The fear can stop soon. Hopefully, I don't, I no, I don't, I don't want to say hopefully because I'm enjoying this game. Like as much as I want to beat it, I'm like I want this game to go on and on and on. It's it's so good playing the Resident Evil, Resident Evil game we've all wanted for years. You know, it's I don't know. Anyways, it's enough about me blabbering about that game. Um, so how about the iTunes shout out this week? Yeah, uh, that that'd be great if we had one. Okay, everyone. Yeah, so um. <laughs> There's no iTunes shout out this week. We didn't get an iTunes review. Uh, and they don't come every week. But we would love if you listen to this podcast and you have not yet reviewed us on iTunes. If you could just pop over there, it's really easy. Just search up middle of nowhere gaming on that new beautiful iTunes layout, which I haven't seen yet. And, uh, um, <laughs> and yeah, just leave us a good or bad review if it's, uh, nice and critically, uh, if, if we can learn from it. If you were wondering what he was talking about about the layout, we actually just had like a 15 minute discussion about it right before we started recording. The, the iTunes just got an upgrade or an update. It's pink now. iTunes 12. And yeah, the, the, uh, uh, logo is now pink and everything about the, the actual program is redesigned. So it's really interesting. 
I like it. I don't know. The pink thing's gonna, like, it's kinda gonna grow on me. It's gonna have to, because at first, like, when I saw the pinkish red logo, I was oh. like, oh god, is there, like, something bad happening? Did somebody hack my account? Like, you, you just think it's an alert or something. By right. the way, uh, not to spoil it, but you can actually see it without resetting your computer, Boa. What? what? Just open iTunes again. Oh no. Now we get to hear, <laughs> we get to hear the raw version, the live version <laughs> of him, him reacting. No, I didn't get it yet. No, oh. never mind. It's a Mac, so. Uh, what a, oh, what okay. a letdown. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the news from nowhere. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Uh, first on the news, um, PlayStation 4 firmware update 2.0 got some more information, uh, or, or they revealed some more information about th- this update. Um, not only is there theme support coming to the PlayStation 4, but users can also change the color of the UI to gold, blue, Red, green, purple, pink, and gray, as well as the original light blue, um, and the upcoming themes. Uh, similar to Facebook, PlayStation will suggest friends based on your friends' friends and what they play. Uh, the live from PlayStation app will be getting an enhancement. Uh, first of all, users will be able to go into the features section to view PlayStation's channel as well as the channels of friends and friends of friends. Uh, people can also sort the videos and streams by game, and the app will have archive support. Uh, more voice commands will be available for those of the PlayStation camera, including find face and start broadcast. All commands will bring up a list of all the commands. Uh, PlayStation 4 is getting a USB support. Support. I said support. Uh, people can put <laughs> music, MP3, MP4, all the, all the different formats, on their USB uh, it can play that music in the background while they browse uh, and play their games. Um, it will also have USB backup support. Uh, and then the UI uh, is getting a major update uh, to with a library tab. Uh, the content area will only have the latest 15 apps on the screen with everything else in the library, which can be accessed, searched, and sorted. Uh, free PlayStation Plus titles can be added to the library, without having to be downloaded, freeing up hard drive space. So, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty excited about all this stuff. It seems yeah, like is, really good updates. This is big, especially the uh, USB support. That is a uh, very intelligent addition, and I just hope that they add uh, being able to stream, like, not stream, but play videos from USB. That would be wonderful. Play videos from USB? Yeah, that is, is M4A not video, or MP4, or... MP4 is, but I don't know why. It seems like people are just referring to music capability, so I don't know. Huh. Okay. What about I'm you, always Luke? excited. Yeah, I always like updates. Um, I can't <laughs> wait for this one. I well, want a date. Which parts of it are you most excited about? Uh, most excited for the sorting. Yeah, the I, content area or yeah. the library tab. I, I just need that in my life. Like I, In my head, when I'm going through all of those pages of things that I've played recently, mm-hmm. I'm just like, I want a folder for PlayStation Plus and for the rest of the stuff that I will never use. Yeah. I'm I'm no I mean I like the library idea uh and especially since the content area is only going to have 15 apps now, so it's mm-hmm. not going to be that much of a scroll to find stuff because on mine right now it's freaking incredibly long. Like it takes a good 45 seconds just to scroll to the other side. And I I'm so it's so annoying to find stuff like that. Yeah. Um and but the other part I like uh, I, that I, sorry, spacing out. Um, I like the PlayStation Plus thing. How you don't actually have to download the games. You could just click add to library, and it'll just you know purchase it and add it to your library. Yeah. That way you can always just download it whenever you actually want to. Right. Yeah, really cool idea. It's kind of it's what it is is it's PlayStation finally realizing that everybody's doing that just to grab the games right away and not actually have to download them. Like they realize right. we're doing that, and so they're like, okay, we're gonna make it easy on you guys here. Just click add to library, then you have the games. Right. So that's cool. Yeah. I normally no folders, but it's progress. Sorry. I normally do it online, so I yeah, I do too on my PlayStation exactly. app normally. Yeah, it's just purchasing it there. So now, what do you guys think about this? Uh, let's just call it PlayStation Facebook. I think it's stupid. It is. It's I mean, really stupid. I'm never going to use it. You know, it it's going to be something I know there will be people using it, but it's just it's so weird. It's I don't know. I don't care who you guys are friends with on PlayStation 
network, you know? Like, I don't mm-hmm. need to find who you're playing Destiny with so that I could play with Destiny with them. Like, if I wanted to do that, I would just look at who you're in a fire team with every day, you know? Right. Like, I just, I don't know. That feels weird. But consider like, this. Um, there's a lot of people in high school who play video games. I'm sure we were some of them. And when you're in high school, unlike us now, you know, who, we friend a bunch of people from Facebook groups and people we've never met and people across the country and all that. The, uh, a lot of people in high school probably are just adding all of their friends. So in that respect, it might actually be useful where you say, oh, this kid's from my uh, third period gym class. Um, let me add him. Maybe. Maybe. As, as long as it's not invasive, I guess I don't really care. But, yeah. I but don't know. I just... I, sorry, go on. If I ever get a pop-up that says, hey... Steve McMillerson and Jack McNicholson are playing this game. You should add Jack McNicholson. Why now, are they both Irish? I, because they can be. Uh, I'll, I will launch my PS4 out of window. That's uh, quite the bold claim there. And I'll have to pay for my neighbor's window because that is exactly where it'll go. <laughs> Out yours and through the other one. Yep. Um, no, I, I like. I'm. I'm more worried about this turning into uh, basically what Facebook is. You know how you could just search for like anyone and find anyone really easily or or the the suggested friends you know you add one person and all of a sudden you just get like a thousand more recommendations because it's based on people they know and and who has mentioned one thing or played one game and yeah. and like then we're going to start getting you know you do you want to search for PlayStation 4 users by age sex location and then, you know it's going to start being let's find chicks who play games and oh god, I just please don't right. do it, PlayStation. Please don't become Facebook. Yeah, at least let us change our names first, because yeah. that's one thing that place that Facebook has done: folders yeah, it, and names. It just doesn't have the social aspect. I think that that a Facebook or uh, MySpace or Google Plus or all those other stuff that people don't use um, has like they're pushing to, for it to be it. Yeah, but what do they have to offer? They have online play, uh, which is something that you can't really coordinate online. It's so counterintuitive to coordinate that over PSN if you've ever tried making a fire team on PSN. Um, yeah, I, I just, it has to be more accessible to having a social feature at all. Well, I mean, I they have the what's new. You can see who's played, what trophies were got, all that stuff. And you could like stuff by giving it a thumbs up and rate stuff and, like that's all Facebook like, but if they they'd have to expand that, right? And I, and the only way to input stuff is still through a controller. Actually, that might not be true. You might be able to plug in a keyboard, but I no think one you, does. you can. I think you can. Yeah, I, I think they actually might be thinking about bringing back uh, um, what the fuck was that PlayStation PlayStation Home in PlayStation Four? I heard that that <laughs> might actually I, be coming back. I thought they killed it on PlayStation Three. Uh, they should really just put it out. They are answer. next year. They're, it's oh, like okay. March 31st or something, the end of the fiscal year, I think. And then, but then I think Shuhei came out and said that there might be a home for it on PlayStation 4. No, I was like, there's, no. For it. <laughs> there's not. No, please don't do it. Uh, fun play on words or not, there's no home for PlayStation Home on the PlayStation it, 4. It's funny too, because until those stories actually came out like last month or the month before, I had never actually seen what PlayStation Home looked like. And somebody posted a picture with the story, and I was like, "Oh, huh, that's what it looks like. It looks kind of cool." But no. you know, I'm never gonna, <laughs> never no. gonna use it ever. No, I mean just it, the simple, the, the ask, like what it, what it is, kind of seems cool. But it is Second Life, and Second Life is a yeah, exactly. Place. It looks, it looked like Second Life, and I did not know that. If they bring home to PlayStation 4, I will burn everyone's houses down. Man, you are just all over this, like, illegal stuff today. <laughs> Arson, kidnapping children. Hey, I didn't say I would kidnap them. No, you just Vandalism didn't kill them. by No, I didn't say I was going to kill them either. I thought you said you were going to kill them. No, what is wrong with you? No one kills children. Oh, I've been watching a lot of Criminal Minds. Jesus, man. But you have, <laughs> you have to remember to add vandalism from breaking the windows. Hey, that that's not intentional. That is Sony's fault. <laughs> All of this is somebody else's fault. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Cor- just listen. You should be my lawyer, Courtney. <laughs> just pull this off. Uh, okay, let's move uh, on. Moving on. Shadow of Mordor now has a photo mode. What? The game is joining the likes of Infamous Second Son and The Last of Us Remastered. After installing the latest update that includes photo mode, you will have to enable it in the options menu. Once you've enabled it, you can initiate it almost when, uh, whenever you want by clicking the appropriate buttons depending on the platform. 
After this, you'll be able to edit it by rotating, moving the camera, tilting the image, applying filters, and adding borders, etc. I uh, uh, I played with it. Yeah. Um, way more options than The Last of Us. Cool. Um, I mean, I, it's it's just as cool, just as cool though. You know, like changing all the borders and changing the depth and and filters and stuff. I I don't know. I really like it. Um, I did not play it, and I haven't seen a lot of videos about it. Um, because I'm always keeping that option open that I may want to go back at some point when I'm not as busy with October releases and play it. And I like being completely surprised by things, especially by stuff like this. But comparatively to Infamous Second Son and Last of Us Remastered, which are beautiful games, just fidelity wise and resolution wise mm-hmm. and all that. How does this stack up? I mean, is it it's as visually as, impressive? Yeah, just as just as visually impressive. Like absolutely up to par. Um Mordor is a beautiful game. The environments are beautiful. Um, now, I mean, obviously it's not like it's, it doesn't have vast environments where there's snow and rain and grass. It just, you know, it's like not all the different kinds of biomes you can find. Um, one of them's like in a, in a, like Arizona. What do you imagine Arizona to be like? It's the second time I heard biome today. (laughs) I think that's the first time I've heard biome in a day. Uh, since like I was practicing SAT stuff, I was gonna say in years, but you've heard it twice today. Yeah, just twice today, but then years before that. Just for you, I'm gonna try and slip it in as often as I can during this no, podcast. No, now it's intentional, so I don't count it. I, I don't care. I'm gonna have fun with this. <laughs> but uh, you know, anyways, the the game is absolutely beautiful, and the character detail and orc detail or whatever is beautiful, and like you could tell by looking at people who are taking screenshots with the new. Uh, photo mode or whatever of the different orcs and how they're killing them and stuff. It's it's gorgeous. It's so uh, cool. Excuse me. I believe that you mean Uryx, um, as, like, as Tolkien said. I believe they're orcs, but they're classified as Uryx, um, based on their like status or whatever, something like that. All right, isn't that right? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I was just messing with you. Uh, uh, I find it interesting that like. If you think about it, so Infamous got its photo mode first, right? Yeah, that works. Yeah. Sorry, go on. Okay. But Infamous got its photo mode first. That kind of made sense. Cause it's like, hey, I, I'm in a modern day time. I have a cell phone. I can take pictures. Last of Us, oh. it's like, uh, you're taking pictures of yourself in the end of the world with zombies and evil cannibals. And I think they're, I don't know, the, the enemies of that game. Yeah. It just seems like it's, I, I don't know. I have just you, thought it was funny. Have you it's used just getting... any of these yet? No, but I'm not. I'm not saying they're useless. I'm not. I'm not like. No, no. Them. I'm pointing out that you're 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 applying logic to the situation of when the picture would be taken. But in these games, you're not taking selfies. I mean, well, you could be, but see, see. it's not like it's not like I you know in in Lord of the Rings where you don't have cell phones, but you're gonna whip out a cell phone and take a selfie with you you and an orc or something. I just think it's funny. It is funny when you think about it like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyways. So, moving on, story three. Uh, so the MPD report has been released, and PlayStation 4 and Destiny are topping the charts. What? Just like, uh, everyone thought they would. You're joking. Uh, no, not, not everyone. Joking. Yeah, someone didn't think they would. Someone. Uh, Sony confirmed that they were industry leader in console sales for the ninth straight month that last night on Twitter. Uh, PlayStation 4 sales saw a huge increase from August, tripling its sales. That's amazing. Take that, uh, actor. <laughs> yeah, Oof. actor. You Pac-Man looking dude. Uh, Nintendo also boasted a strong month, uh, increasing 3DS sales from, sales, sales from August by 55%. They also stated that Wii U sales significantly went up compared to August, but did not provide any statistics. Like, how do you go significantly up, uh, but kind of, under 55% somehow? That sounded a little sketchy, Nintendo. <laughs> uh, so far, Microsoft has not commented on last month's MPD numbers, but we will update the story once they have. Uh, yeah, that, that also sounds sketchy. Microsoft is clearly not happy with themselves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, the top 10 best sellers at retail in the United States stores, of course, during September. Uh, they're, I'm going to list them in a second. Remember, this does not include digital sales or bundles. The order of consoles in parentheses are from best selling to worst. You don't need so, to mention the consoles in, in okay. all the parentheses. Just, I'm fine with We it. can mention one. So, of them. Uh, okay, I think I know which we one. We can talk about them. Yeah. We don't I'll have mention to... the two that matter. There you go. 
Because, yeah. So, Destiny tops the charts, and uh, that was Xbox One, PS4, 360, PS3, uh, Madden NFL 15, FIFA 15, Super Smash Bros. for 3DS, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, uh, NHL 15, Minecraft, 360 and PS3, and The Sims 4, Destiny Infinity 2.0, and Diablo 3, Reaper of Souls. So, okay, the most interesting one on the whole list is definitely Destiny. Like, that... That is that is weird, 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 weird that it has it listed as Xbox One as the best seller, PS4, 360, and then PS3, where it's saying Microsoft outsold PlayStation on both this current gen and last gen. Um, but again, it doesn't include digital or bundles, which is what everyone has been saying Sony just like skyrocketed last month with because of the Destiny bundle and because of PSN sells, the digital sells for Destiny. That's just, right. I don't know. That's I, I have my a mind. feeling that it actually did probably beat um, PS3. I, I have a feeling oh, that... Oh, 360? Yeah, 360. Oh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have any doubt about last generation. Right. The current gen, yeah. The current gen. Like, PS4 smashed xbox one i have no doubt in my mind but retail interesting that xbox beats ps4 now in your mind would you say that destiny smashed minecraft (laughs) um first of all (laughs) your your douche little move there is still not actually out there like we still don't know total sales um We, we generally know Nearly a hundred percent. The only one we don't know is Xbox One sales. Besides that, we know everything else. Or Xbox 360 sales, like the total sales. Like you, we don't know any numbers. That's at all. I think um, at the moment, the the current biome of information we have is that Lou's getting a pizza. Lou is waiting on his <laughs> pizza, and he's trying to do the whole where, like, okay, if you imagine Podcast Beyond. He's doing the thing where it's partially, it's partially seen, partially known, and so he's trying to make it seem like it's fact. And I'm pulling the call in where I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa! You're not taking all of the information in, into consideration yet. It's not true yet. <laughs> so I'm pushing it off because, like, this list does not include any digital sales. However, on PlayStation Blog, they released their top ten sellers for the uh, PlayStation Network last month, in, month in which. Destiny topped number one, and Minecraft was number two. But again, we don't know numbers there. Um, and we don't know how that did on Xbox on on digital sales on either P- uh, Xbox 360 or Xbox One. We don't know how PC sales went, because they don't even include that in this. Do people still buy it on PC anymore? That still happens? Uh, I'm I mean, assuming, yeah. Cause sure it's... someone does, but most anyone who wants it has it by now. I would assume, anyway. Yeah. Uh, for anyone who's wondering, uh, I think a few podcasts ago there was a bet made. It was, that, a, it was uh, episode fifty. We're both drunk. Which oh, oh, again, yeah. again, I've asked a few times now for you to go back and listen to it and tell us what it actually said. But yeah, go on, <sighs> Miles. You were, you were explaining. It, they were drunk. It's in the ballpark of if Destiny outsold Minecraft once it released on all the systems. I believe that Courtney had to buy Lou a pizza, or yep. the the winner. Gets a pizza from the yeah. Owner. So there you go. And I, I'm, I believe if I remember correctly, I, I may be a little wrong, but I, th- I swore I was really reluctant in choosing Minecraft. I think it I'm was pretty I, sure everyone else was like, "Oh, absolutely no, Minecraft is gonna win." I, uh, I wasn't. And I, you weren't. No, I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I was. I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure everyone was pretty reluctant, and like we kind of just had to bait me into just taking it so somebody would take the bet with you. <laughs> And so I was like, okay, fine, I'll take that. I think that's how it We're going to pull it up, and we're going to put it at the end of a podcast. I was going to say, you're going to pull it up and find yeah. it. I'm not going to do it. I, I want to make Toonday our official fact checker. Toonday, that's Toon your Day, job now. Evan, Josh, somebody find We will it. have a jury of our peers decide this. No, we will not. We don't have <laughs> anybody we trust implicitly. Nobody. You hear that? He doesn't trust you guys implicitly. So Has, you have they have they given us me. have they given us that we should trust them on anything? Is there anything? I trust them all implicitly. But questions, <laughs> questions. We don't even get a question from them all every week. How can we trust them? No, I love them. I love them all, <laughs> like a child, like a child, <laughs> or a parent. I'm not exactly sure. I'm pretty sure a lot of them may be older than me. Probably. 
I don't know. I hadn't um, even thought about that, to be honest. Yeah, like I, distant cousin. Distant cousin. That I love that, implicitly because I'm told to. Because you're told. sound all that trust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, okay. so moving on. Uh, number four. Halo, the Master Chief Collection, has officially gone gold. According to a post or a blog post on Halo Waypoint, um, and then, uh, this means that the collection can be pre-ordered digitally and pre-downloaded now on Xbox One. Um, that's good news. That's really good news. It comes out in like, what, three weeks now? 11, yep, yep. 11, 14 or something like that? Yep. Something like that, yeah. And, uh, and there's what, four games on it and all the DLC, all the maps and all that shit? Like, that's a, it's gonna that's be a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's gonna be, gonna be a lot of stuff to download. Um, but it, no, it's, it's really good news to know that they've got everything in working order and don't have to delay it or anything. Yeah. It just sucks you can't get the, uh, the bundle in America. Yeah. Like you should oh, be able by to. the way, I have an actual answer to you guys about that. I was listening to the podcast and. What, what did we ask? Um, you guys said, I wonder why that is happening only in Brazil and oh. not the rest. Okay. Um, Inform us. This, if I'm correct, I'm not sure it does, it does involve some speculation, but, um. Then why, how is it an answer? <laughs> no, well, it, it's, it's semi-legitimate because, um, Microsoft, if you remember, Brazil has some crazy outlandish foreign import tax for games and oh, yeah. gambling. Um, and the one way that Microsoft has managed to stay cheaper there is because they have their own production. <laughs> Um, company there. Yeah. They produce Xboxes within Brazil to sell to Brazil. Mm-hmm. So my guess is that the reason why it's a limited run in Brazil is because they're only, um, they're only doing it within whatever, um, production plan they do in Brazil. But they're still twice the price as they are or would be here. So that doesn't make any sense. No, I'm they're just still saying just reason- as expensive there. Oh yeah. No, I, I understand it's just as expensive there as it is here, but um, or, it, or really exorbitantly expensive. But if I forget what it was when it initially came out, but the PlayStation Four was like three or four times. Um, yeah, it the was. Cost. It was like sixteen hundred or something. It was ridiculous. Jeez. Right. So I, I just think it's a, it's an issue where they have one factory readily equipped and it's the one in Brazil. Why they don't free up the resource to do it in all of them, I have no clue. But at the moment, I think that's the reason why it's just limited to Brazil. Hmm. Interesting hypothesis, my friend. I should contact Here. them about it. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. Major yeah. Nelson. Oh, also, this for me. I found out what the R for their money is. It's real or real. I don't know how you're supposed oh. to pronounce it. Oh, I guess I should have known that. Yeah, that makes history sense. History major. That has nothing to do with history. I know. This has everything to do with like <laughs> politics and economy, not history. Tis, but, tis, tis. But, <laughs> I'm anyways. sure historians of Brazil would differ. <laughs> yeah, if I was a historian <laughs> of Brazil, maybe. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, anyways, uh, let's move on. Sure. Dragon Age Inquisition's resolution has been confirmed. What uh, is this- it? This is thanks to a cheeky tweet from Bioware earlier this week, which well, last week, yeah, um, last week, which has since been removed. But uh, they said confirmed Dragon Age Inquisition resolution is 1080p on PS4 and 900p on Xbox One. We maximize the current potential on each platform. Uh, the hypothesis is that it was to retaliate against um, the Ubisoft. Um, P gate. <laughs> gamer, <laughs> gamer P gate. Gamer P gate. There you go. That sounds good. Um, where if you guys, um, if you listeners don't remember, Ubisoft went out there and said that they're keeping everything locked at 900p across consoles and they were even trying for, uh, PC too, just to avoid the fanboy war, uh, even though it could probably be optimized better. All they did by we're trying to avoid the d- the debates and stuff was his his quote, and all it did was create debates. Exactly, like it it's just like, it I, reversed, like it was opposite of what they wanted. Uh, uh, what is what is Dragon Age Inquisition resolutions by the way? Beyond a ridiculously long title. Um. Did oh, you not, did oh, you not read it? I, was saying, I, I I thought this was another game. <laughs> oh my god! What are you talking? 
Okay. I thought it was like a game literally called Dragon Age Inquisition Resolutions because for some reason I thought about like how uh, Assassin's Creed has like three different games in the yeah. works right now. So I thought this was another game. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you just had like the biggest brain fart. Well, it's because it's all capitalized, so I was just like, so it's half title. <laughs> That's all one title. Oh. Dragon Age Inquisition resolutions have been confirmed. Dash dash Correct. Lou. <laughs> it's, the, it's the futuristic title where you go in and deal with a conspiracy or something. <laughs> so, does 1080p, 1080p on PS4 compared to 900p on Xbox One change your opinion on Dragon Age Inquisition whatsoever? Well, I'm playing it on the better system, so I don't care. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to get the most value for my game, which is what I like to know when I buy a game. Shots fired. Um, if I had an Xbox One and it was going to be 900p compared to 1080p, I still wouldn't give a fuck. I would right. still get it. But only I an Xbox One. Well, if I preferred Xbox One as my platform over PS4, I would definitely get it over there too. That's for like it's it's just about what do you prefer. I don't care about 1080p versus 900p. I care about achievements or trophies or my, where my friends are playing that kind of that stuff. That reminds me, I'm actually going to have friends who are now. I'm actually gonna have friends. Just you, the you're gonna, sentence. I'm actually gonna friends. have like now. I'm gonna have the platform that all of my college friends and high school friends play on because they all play Xbox One. So wow. now this actually has to be a consideration for me: is if the multiplayer aspect of Dragon Age Inquisition is more important than the extra 180 piece. No, I, I don't think the multiplayer will. <laughs> Sounds fun. Yeah, it sounds fun, but I think that's more of like a a Halo Sunset Overdrive multiplayer is probably going to be better, or Call of Duty or something. Wait, Sunset Overdrive is multiplayer? Yeah, I, I haven't been looking at anything for that. I God, can't wait. Luke. Yeah, I you probably well, haven't even heard of I'm, Dragon Age Inquisition. I'm in I'm I'm in complete <laughs> hype darkness. I yeah, so am I. I don't want to see anything else on Sunset Overdrive. I uh, the only trailer I've seen is the one trailer. Where he was making fun of Call of Duty, the main character. That was funny. Right, that was the E3 one. Yep, that's the only trailer I've seen for Sunset Overdrive. And the, I've just avoided everything else. The last thing I saw from Sunset Overdrive was the announcement of the bundle with the white Xbox One. Yep. And then I hit pre-order and I was locked out. Yep. I, uh, oh god, it's, we're a week away. I can't even believe I'm that. I'm so excited. I, I didn't even know when it's coming out. That's how like blocked out I am in my head I had to ask Courtney right when we started <laughs> I don't want to watch anything about it because it'll make me sad <laughs> yeah I was just say it's going to gonna show up on my doorstep one morning I'm going to go pick it up at our GameStop so um, but as also speaking of one week away um, this is something that Miles can actually get into Freedom Wars also comes out next Tuesday uh, I could if I had a Vita or a Playstation TV <laughs> well go get a Playstation TV oh <laughs> uh, that's money sir Money. Money, yeah. money, money, money. I mean, if stop food, eating at Chili's. That'd be great. Yeah. I stop pay eating at Chili's. What? Guys, stop talking at the same time. Oh, I sorry. don't pay for my food, is my response. Oh, who pays for your oh. food? Uh, I play Destiny for my friend, and he pays for my food. Oh, what? Uh, I need that hookup. Oh, my God. He he actually works and does other things, so I have to do his uh, farming and bounty sometimes. <laughs> now, did you get him a Vex Mythoclast, and how much uh, No. was that bonus? <laughs> I did not get him a Vex Mythical class, so that, there you go. <laughs> that was a Taco Bell lunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Um, the Wii U exclusive modes um, have for Super Smash Bros. for Wii U may have accidentally been published on Amazon. The listing for Amazon for Super Smash Bros. for Wii U has leaked some tasty tidbits about the game, namely a level edit editor and a new board game mode so far nintendo has yet to con- uh, comment on these new modes but there is a super smash bros nintendo direct this thursday october 23rd yes yes so we're expecting that we may be hearing some information about it then so two uh, things cool. um i think you didn't copy super smash bros 4 at the beginning of the title because then that would have made more sense when you said wii u exclusive modes for <laughs> Yeah, I I realized that. And then <laughs> and then confused. when and when you were reading it off, you read new board game mode instead of new board game mode. And so I was like, what's a new board game mode? Like, sorry. Hmm. So, what do you guys think this is? Uh, what, what uh, not level editor. That's actually really easy. The board game mode? <laughs> board game mode. Uh, Sounds oh. like you 
go around the board and fight your opponents. Yeah, I was going to say, it's probably kind of like a Mario Party thing where you can move around, you have moves or whatever, and you fight different opponents at each each spot. With probably modifiers. Yeah, I was, that's, uh, yeah, I was thinking that too just now. Well, diff- different kind of modifiers based on where you are. That'd be interesting because I think that would mostly cater to um, multiplayer games, just like Mario uh, Party. If I were to play Mario Party, I it, I could do it single player, but it's more fun to do it with friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she said. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this sounds interesting. I mean, if I had a Wii U and a Super Smash Bros, I'd play it. Yeah. You gonna watch on Thursday? No. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely not watching on Thursday. <laughs> I'll read up about it and then I'll I'll play it whenever I have Super Smash Bros on my Wii U, but not gonna watch it. <laughs> I'm gonna be in class at that time, um, yep. so that means that the video is gonna be muted, hopefully with subtitles, probably without, um, as I try and figure out what's happening on my screen. What time what? is it Thursday? It's at, I believe, seven Eastern. A.M. No, yep. PM. Oh, oh. Is it? oh. I was gonna say they wow. always do all their stuff at like nine AM, eight AM. Yeah, they do. I think they actually want people to watch this time. <laughs> <laughs> they told yeah. us like more than like the night beforehand. That's the best is when suddenly there's a Nintendo Direct and it's like the next morning at like six AM. Yeah. That's uh plan your keep your keep your schedules open, basically. <laughs> To this date, my uh, my favorite one's I think the Mario Kart one, where they announced it the day before, and you had to wake up at like seven or eight in the morning. And when you did, it was about some guy waking up at seven or eight in the morning, and like <laughs> not wanting to watch Nintendo things and just flicking the channel. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so next next on the list is uh, Xbox One is getting an Assassin's Creed Unity bundle. Uh, this bundle will will have both the upcoming Assassin's Creed Unity and last year's Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. The bundle will be available with or without Connect, or and without whatever, either both. Uh, the Connect free bundle will go on sale for three ninety nine, uh, and the Connect edition will be four ninety nine. Uh, exclusive to the Connect edition bundle, Microsoft is also going to throw in a copy of Dance Central Spotlight because everybody knows that assassins, <laughs> pirates, and dancing go together. Yeah, uh, do, that's so awesome. I'm so happy about this news, and I'm not being sarcastic. Due to go on sale in, in North America on November 2nd, which is another ridiculous point, uh, and November 4th in Europe, the bundle will come with digital codes for both games. However, players will be able to will be unable to download and play Assassin's Creed Unity until its release on November 11th uh, in uh. North America and November 14th in Europe. So it doesn't matter that you got your bundle early because you're still not going to be able to play the new game that comes with it. But you can do the dancing pirate thing. But you could do the dancing and the pirates. So that's it's great. So why are you so excited about this news? Um, because I think they're actually learning from some mistakes that they've made in the past. Um, first off, I I this is unrelated, but I like oh. that they're including two games. Yeah. Um, however, the thing that I was referring to. Was Connect. that now when they offer bundles, they're offering both the Connect and the Connect free bundle at yeah. the same time. That's... Because that really annoyed me when I had to get Sunset Overdrive and could not have Connect as an option. Yeah, see, I, same thing with me. Um, I'm getting the Sunset Overdrive bundle also. And, uh, because it's only coming Connect free, uh, I'm not getting my Connect for Xbox One. And at first, that really, really, really bugged the shit out of me because I have my PlayStation Eye, you know, and I use it for streaming. And I was like, well, what the fuck? Now I'm not going to be able to do it on Xbox because of this bundle. Um, but it's just, it's more now financially forced me into the position where I'm just, I don't even care. I'm just like, I'm just not going to get a, get a connect for a while, then maybe a year, you know, who knows when I'll get it. Um, but yeah, they should this, lower that price. This, uh, right. yeah, definitely. Lower yeah, make price. it, sorry, make on. it 350. Yeah. And give us a, Give us a white, a white connect. You know, oh, I, I, go, oh, on. go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, you know how cool that'd be. Oh yeah. Um, I, I didn't mean lower the price to the bundle. I just meant lower the price to the standalone connect. That's, I still think that's ridiculous. Yeah. That's what I was referring to. Miles yeah. in a different direction. <laughs> yeah. I did. Yeah. It's how much is it? Is it still 150? I believe so. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. 
I got it. If you guys have been listening for a while, you'll remember I picked mine up before or not before. It was right after the announcement. The second they announced that, I went on eBay and just bought it from some Xbox One user who was really dissatisfied with Connect. <laughs> yeah, didn't and, we actually – didn't Dustin on our team sell his Connect like the week or two before that for like 40 bucks or something? Yeah, <laughs> something like that. That's That's about what I got mine around. It's ridiculous. I just – I can't even – Ah, I'd be so pissed. <laughs> so pissed. So, um, I do, I do like what you, you brought up the, the two games. That's really cool. It's interesting that they're, they're including Black Flag. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't really get it. Maybe it's, maybe it's a, it's, you know, you didn't buy an Xbox One, so you're buying your first one. So clearly you missed out on this awesome game that was released last year. So we're going to give you both to catch up and play them both on, you know, as good as it can get on the next, the newest quality, you know, generation of consoles or something. I just, I don't know. I just can't imagine anybody who's going to buy Unity or a Unity bundle hadn't played Black Flag yet. Yeah. That does just kind of like drive up the price a little bit more. I would just buy them separately, to be honest. Yeah. I might have been that person. If it wasn't for Sons of Overdrive, that might have been the one that got me. Because yeah. I hadn't played either. Yeah. Anyways. Moving on. All right. So, story eight, which is our last story of the night, even though it's not the night. Well, it will be by the time you listen to this. Anyway, Still the night. Pl- <laughs> uh, I was going to sing something, but I forgot what it was. PlayStation 4 exclusives, or one exclusive, is to be announced in December. Happy birthday to me. Tell me uh, more. Yeah, I will. Uh, Julian Cheese? <laughs> Ch- Chez? I don't know. C- C-H- like she is or something. She is. Let's go with that. No, I'm going to go Cheese. I like that better. Julian Cheese, co-founder and editor of Game, Game Blog France, revealed his knowledge of the announcement on t- on Twitter. And uh, the translated tweet reads, I just learned of the existence of a big PS4 exclusive which will engulf the internet in December. Be prepared. Uh, a second editor, uh, I'm going to say Roman, even though it looks like Romain. Uh, Roman I... Mahut. What are you going to say? No, I was gonna say it's probably his Romaine. <laughs> uh, Romaine Mahut. Uh, Romaine lettuce. Uh, <laughs> God, Julian Cheese and Romaine lettuce. Uh, <laughs> he added to the hype with a tweet of his own. I know what it is, and I can tell you that it will actually make a lot of noise and induce rage. Uh, it's safe to assume that the rumored announcement will take place during Sony's very first PlayStation Experience event, which is uh, scheduled for December 6th and 7th in Las Vegas, Nevada. Rage sequel confirmed. So, <laughs> what I've gathered from this is that they're gonna drug everyone at this place because they're gonna get they're gonna get really mad, really angry, and make a lot of noise, and <laughs> it, then they're gonna imagine something's engulfing the internet, and that, that would have to be huge to engulf it. They're just gonna they're gonna be like really high on something. You took that in a complete different direction than I ever would have expected, but okay. <laughs> well, I was I, I was starting it off. What I wanted to say originally was that engulfing the internet that that's huge. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be really literal about that if it's going to engulf it. Um, but then once he started saying the rage and stuff, I was like, oh, maybe I could turn this into a drug joke. <laughs> so are we taking bets, double or nothing, on pizza? On on the game? You want to wait? If you want to wait until December to decide this. <sighs> I have a gambling uh, problem, guys. Dude, if it's okay, it's a gambling. If it's a game, I don't know. It's it's hard to it's hard to imagine what this could be if it's a PS4 exclusive, because um, it doesn't say by a first party developer. So it could True. be a third party developer like Tomb Raider. You know, it could be that kind of thing. But at We're the same time, who knows? Back. What? We're taking Tomb Raider back. <laughs> taking Tomb Raider back. You know, we actually did a backdoor deal. <laughs> with Crystal Dynamics. It's going to be titled 1080p edition. Oh. <laughs> oh, they should do that. They won't, oh. but they should. Eh, I don't know what this is, and uh, I'm I'm curious. I'm ex- I'm not going to say excited, because it could turn out to be like, it's My Little Pony meets Barbie Mayhem Throwdown. That actually sounds kind of cool. What but, uh, the fuck? I don't know. I'm just coming up, coming up with stuff off the top of my head. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this could be interesting. It, uh, I would hope so, considering they're... Saying it's going to engulf the internet. I mean, I think that it's got to be a already established series that is going PS4 only. Like a third party series? 
Yeah, that's why they say induce rage. But I think this is I think they're firing back at um the Tomb Raider. Max Effect. Oh my god. Oh that, if would that be- happened. That would be a, a rage inducing and all internet engulfing thing. Half Life <laughs> Three. <laughs> There's not even on PC anymore. Yeah. Just- <sighs> like I just I I kinda wanted to be Mass Effect now. I just want to see how the internet reacts. They could announce that it's uh, Mass Effect. It doesn't actually have to be true. <laughs> oh, we're just messing with you. It's not Mass Effect. We're not telling you anything yet. <laughs> I just I can't think of anything bigger than that. Like, you know, uh, it would Final Fantasy's already been announced as being multi-platform. Um, it Metal Gear Solid. I don't think would really induce that much rage no. if it wasn't Xbox. You know. Um, right. Dragon Quest hasn't been relevant. Oh um, man, I would love Dragon Quest to come out to America again. Kingdom Hearts is still Sony exclusive. Well, I guess Kingdom Hearts three isn't. Um, Resident Evil technically, but that even wouldn't cause that much of a big deal. Yeah, I'm blanking on major on uh, major franchises. If it was Bioshock, that'd be one thing, but that's dead. Yeah, exactly. Grand Theft Auto would be a huge one. Grand Theft Auto, Mass Effect. Uh, Borderlands. The, yeah, maybe Borderlands. There's no, there's no sports games that would make that big of a, a, a difference. I don't think. Um, it's Conquer. He's coming back. Oh PlayStation God. only. Now, see, what I'm thinking though is that what if it's a, what if it's a Microsoft or previously Microsoft only game? You know, like exclusive say, years. game. Like years what? <laughs> Yeah, you know, somebody, somebody who doesn't have a contract anymore, you know, somebody who's not developing that game or hasn't in a while and then is switching something like Gears, even though they are working on a game. Yeah, exactly. They, yeah, isn't Black Tusk on? Yeah, Black Tusk, Black Tusk is doing it. But I, I mean, I'm not sure on the specifics. So I don't know if it's, is it actually being developed only for Xbox? Has they, have they said that? I mean, everybody assumes that. I think, I feel like Black Tusk is like a second party. Probably. I don't know. I don't know enough about it because I haven't really cared about Microsoft as a as a console in a while. <laughs> well, all we can really do is wait and see what they say. Cause yeah, it's it, owned it'll by be... Microsoft Studios. Okay, and that yeah. makes sense. Well, this news could either be like actually be rage-inducing, as this, as uh, Mr. Romain Lettuce suggests, or it could be a complete flop and no one cares. So. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Who knows? Or Assassin's Creed. I guess that's another big one. Or Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs no, would be another one. No one cares about Watch Dogs. Um, I don't know. They announced, uh, they announced, uh, Assassin's Creed games and Watch Dogs game, or will be announcing Watch Dogs games, uh, just about like, mm, the be, the first quarter towards second quarter every year. And so like that, uh, you know, December just could be a little bit early, but. No, I'm not playing another Watch Battle Dogs. Battlefront so. 3. Battlefront 3. Wow, that would actually piss off quite yeah, a few people. Yeah, that would be a huge one, actually. Blood in the streets. <laughs> Anything linked to Star Wars will cause battles. Anything linked to Star Wars or superheroes. Like, I can see those causing huge, huge meltdowns. Oh my, Marvel vs. Capcom. PlayStation exclusive. Mm. Anyways. That's big fighting game community, alright? I don't care what you think. <laughs> no, I, no, I was trying to think of a segue. Oh, okay. So uh, let's let's uh, move on to the re- review wrap up biome. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Not acknowledging it. I don't care. <laughs> okay, so first game on the review wrap up this week is Alien Isolation. Um, I reviewed it. I gave it an eight point six out of ten. Um, my wrap up at the end says Alien Isolation is everything that I hoped it would be. It nailed the atmosphere of the movie by using several assets from it. The story was a direct sequel to the first movie, and the alien was incredibly scary throughout the entire game. Other than the minor issues like the horrid save point system and the alien literally being magic, uh, <laughs> the creative assembly did a fantastic, it says fantastic twice, fantastic job by releasing such a polished game. Um, it felt true to the alien franchise throughout the entire game, and I really hope that they're able to work on a sequel for a- isolation in the future and possibly turn it into a series, kind of like the movies. Um, yeah, like, it, okay, the game, from the very get go, you know, you feel like you're in the movie. Like it's the old, what they thought, it, you know, futuristic computers would look like and screens and all that stuff. 
everywhere and and just the sound it, it's the exact soundtrack from the movie and all the sound effects and stuff from the movie and and then it's just the whole game is you just creeping along corridors and hiding and and running for your life whenever you need to and and the alien just hunting you and stuff um but, I heard uh, it teleports. But yeah, the alien fucking can be in two places at once sometimes. Um, it can get around really, really, really fast. Um, it's a one hit kill anytime it gets you. Uh, it's, there's some, there's some definite problems with it. But overall, it was a fantastic game. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and it's, uh, I did originally have a section in my, in the review, um, that I took out at the last minute um and it was about the length of the game uh the length has been criticized specifically by IGN uh as being too long and that they would have thought or it would have been a better game had it only been 6 hours and and it, my my paragraph in it was basically disputing that it was it was you know since when have we judged the length of the game as being you know the f- defining whether or not a game is good or not especially something as minimal as anywhere between six and 20 hours. Like that's not a huge difference. I get the, if it's 300 hours compared to, you know, 40 hours, that's an incredible difference, but six hours compared to 20 is nothing in the grand scheme of things. Um, and while yes, the game does have the same mechanics throughout it, you know, whether or not it, the length of the game isn't going to change your opinion. If you don't like how the hide and seek nature of the game, you don't like it. It's not going to get old, you know, after just a few more hours. But uh, it's it's it was really fun. I, I encourage anybody who likes the Alien franchise to play it, or anybody who wants a scare, because there are definitely some of those. <laughs> <laughs> Teleporting aliens—that's yeah. scary as it gets. Dude, I swear to God, though, there was this time I'm going down a fucking hall and I'm looking at my motion sensor, and it's like beside me in the walls. You know, I'm like, okay, and then it goes behind me, and I I hear it fall out of one of the vents and I could see it around the corner behind me. I'm like, Oh my God, it's over there. So now's my chance to turn and run. And so I turned and started creeping around a corner and all of a sudden it's around the corner on the opposite side of where I just saw it instant killed. I was like, what the fuck? How did you get over here? Ah. Space magic. He's actually the darkness. He is the darkness. Fucking destiny death. reference. Fucking references. Destiny. <laughs> darkness. All right. So uh, our second review this week um, uh, is it was done by uh, one of our writers, Aaron. It's Sinran Kagura, Shinobi Versus. And it was given to 7 out of 10. And I did not say that incorrectly. It is Shinobi and not Shinobi. Yep. Uh, Sin, I'm just going to call it Kagura. Uh, Kagura is a well-designed brawler with a, lo- with a ton of heart. It uh, emphasizes on the sexiness of the female cast in a little bit. And it can be a little bit off-putting at times. And uh, things like the clothing damage gimmick really do limit the game's appeal, even if uh, Aaron was not personally bothered by it. But behind all the fluff of TNA, I don't know what that means, uh, is an adrenaline-pumping action I, game I think, that oozes I think it means personnel. tits and ass. That's what I thought, but I was hoping it wasn't. Well, maybe wrong. <laughs> no, I, I will attest that that is what he means. I'll okay. explain it afterwards. Okay. Go okay. Uh, anyway, uh, with a cast of strong characters, which is... That almost sounds oxymoronic compared to what he said already. Uh, <laughs> um, and a, the game's a, or, and a seriously engrossing pro- plot, Shinobi Versus continues the series tradition of playing with opposites, light and dark, yin and yang, comedy and drama, and so on. The game similarly exists between two opposing poles. It's uh, hard to recommend to everyone because of its outside appearance, and indeed, it's going to turn off a lot of players. But if you uh, feel like giving it a chance, you might find yourself as surprised as he was when he first discovered just how good the series can be. Uh, just make sure you know what you're getting into. So, yeah, don't don't play this one in public. It's not safe for work. <laughs> um, yeah, so what he means when, when he says know what you're getting into, this is as um, traditional anime Japanese, like in it's, it's... sexual innuendos and whatnot as you can get there's a big debate about this game a while back uh it originally released uh i think the the precursor to this one released on the ds so that's weird enough to begin with yeah but but uh there's uh it's a brawler game where the gimmick is that their clothes tear off and um they could at some points get completely nude um and 
all of that, there's a very, very in-depth jiggle mechanic. That's, that's a very for, strong um, Japanese game thing. Yeah. Uh, so you got the tearing off clothes, jiggle. Uh, you got a female cast. Though he says, you know, it, it clearly objectifies the female cast because of this. And there's tons of jokes about it here and there that if you look past that or if you're fine with it or if you don't care about that, if you want to skip through those scenes, um, the cat, the cast is actually pretty, uh, pretty good with showcasing strong women with strong personalities and, um, there's no man, like man that comes in and saves them and all of that. Um, so yeah, just know That's- that. This is Monster Mon piece, essentially. That's, <laughs> it, well, the game sounds a lot like um, the wow, oh, God! It, it released a, another game that released in August, where that was also a, a fighting to take off their clothes to prove uh, that they're oh, an alien. Uh, Akiba. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Akiba. Akiba's yeah. trip. Um, um, Didn't Aaron review that too? Yes, I think he did. More. He's, he's, he's not Aaron. typecast. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't remember. Um. It anyways. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, the, all those things are, are, are very strong. They're fan service is what it is. It's fan service yeah. and Japanese. It's anime and games and stuff like that. It's bouncing boobs. It's always big boobed girls, stuff like that. However, at the same time, they do do, when they do do that, um, like Aaron pointed out though, is that a lot of times there's a, it's actually really, really, really strong female characters. And no males need to save them. You know, they're actually really good personality wise and stuff like that. But, they always have big tits, big ass, barely wear any clothes, you know, that kind of they thing. They look like they're 12. Yeah, um, and look like they're 12, though. Yeah. yeah, but, like, for instance, as much as Bayonetta is getting knocked um, here and there, it's actually not being knocked too no, much. But say, as it's much not as being knocked at all. Polygon will knock him around um, for being hypersexualized. You also got to look past that and notice that I think Bayonetta is a single mother who's fighting to save her kid or something. Um, There was an in-depth analysis of like why she is such a strong female character besides the fact that it's it's very uh, stylized to be over sexual at times. I'm over sexual. You guys know. Yeah. So the last Uh. review for this week. (laughs) Is uh, for Borderlands the pre sequel. It was reviewed by our very own Patrick, and Patrick? he gave Sorry. he gave it a seven point five out of ten. Um, the Not bad. the conclusion so far as written isn't really finalized yet, so I don't want to make up words for him. Um, so I'll just give you a summary, and you could of course read it when it comes out within the day. Um, it's probably out if you're already listening to this. But um, he says that it was good. It was exactly what you'd expect if you're expecting um, another iteration of more Borderlands that is doing exactly what Borderlands 2 did very well. Um, it's not going to be the next big, th- big thing, and you can't expect it. It's not Borderlands 3, but they do add some additions here or there um, that are very nice and at times still fall into the same kind of pitfalls. Um, the oxygen uh addition as as well as the new uh the new trees like skill trees he said were really really interesting and complex because um people are so used to starting off with the same kind of skill trees and iterations of games like uh, for pokemon how many people are so used to just getting um fire uh water and plant at this point um but yeah what what he's saying is expect the same thing as borderlands 2 and uh, the original Borderlands, and if you enjoyed that, then you'll enjoy this. And see, I don't know. That's probably the worst part about it for me. Yep, is that I loved Borderlands One, loved Borderlands Two, was not interested whatsoever in the pre sequel, and never have been for the simple fact that it is just like those games. It's I, I you know, I played fifty, sixty, seventy hours on them. And I just do not want to spend any more time with it right now. Like, I, I don't know. I just have not been interested. And I don't know if I ever will be. I don't know why. I, com- I completely agree. Because uh, after I had, uh, what, four level 50 characters, I, I did not want to even look at uh, Borderlands 2 anymore. And honestly, when I was a, uh, it, it might sound superficial, but I was looking at uh, the pre-sequel 
like you know back when it was still in development yeah and at first i was gonna i was given a chance it was like oh well the the hud looks exactly the same the graphics are the same but you know maybe they're gonna change things up once the final version comes out and i saw it and i was like oh this is the exact same thing i i don't want to spend another hour in looking at this (laughs) so that that was my personal hang yeah I, i just i don't know I can't see myself playing it anytime soon. However, that does not take away from the fact that it's a good game. You know, like, I can definitely understand that it's a good game. I can definitely understand that people will want to play it, hardcore fans. Um, I'm just more saying that I just, I've spent too much time with the Borderlands series and, and I do not want to play another one right now. Or I will, eventually. Yeah, I see, eventually time. I might, but it's just oh. right now I can't put that into my schedule. There's no way. There's right. also the whole thing where it didn't come out on current gen consoles oh, that yeah. I don't understand. There's I that don't. Too. I don't understand that the gearbox. Send Andrew Gold far to my house and make him explain it. It's because at E3 they're going to announce the Borderlands uh, Collector's Edition for current gen consoles, which will include this. You mean at the PlayStation Experience event they're going to announce the Borderlands uh, Collection Edition? Mines only, would explode. Only for PlayStation Four. <laughs> I'd be really disappointed if that's what it was. To be honest, me too. I would be yeah, would. so disappointed. I, I see what I want it to be. I'm really wanting it to be the Mass Effect Collection One, Two, God, and Three yes. trilogy and Mass Effect Four PlayStation Four. Like, oh man. <sighs> like, I don't want to alienate all my Xbox having friends, but I, I would not care. I'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I could die happy. I'd be like, I picked the right system. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all suck. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so let's move on <laughs> to another biome. Uh, yeah, the listener questions biome. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so I'll read the first question from Toon Day. Thank you, Toon Day, for submitting a question. I he love said, you again. Mong, in the wake Mong. of the Gamergate controversy, I keep seeing more and more YouTubers saying that game media sites like IGN and GameSpot are dying and the YouTube gaming channels are going to become the new games media in the next few years. What makes this even more surprising is that most of the people who do news videos for games get all their news from these sites and don't put out nearly as much content as they do. So my question is, do you agree with this statement? In the next 10 years, will PewDiePie and Angry Joe be getting all the scoops first? No. Okay, so yeah. First of all, without being um a dick about it um whatsoever youtubers saying that they're going to be the next thing is not like you got to take that with a grain of salt because that's them claiming that they're going to be taking over you can't you can't do that like that's got it's got to be somebody else it's got to be like a um an industry insider it's got to be you know somebody who analyzes these type of things it cannot be the youtubers claiming they're the ones taking over going to destroy ign like this is why ign has a youtube channel this is why yeah. gamespot has a youtube channel you know like they're doing that to shut these other guys up also let's be honest youtubers are already pretty big I'm like yeah but, but they're their news, own thing. yeah i'm not saying that they're going to take over because they're definitely not going to uh they I don't feel like they cater to that kind of thing. Like, if I watch YouTubers, like gaming YouTubers, it's to watch Let's Plays or something. I don't ever want to get my news from them. That's what I go to IGN and the dedicated news sites for. And also, I don't know, people just give, like, journalism sites a lot of flack over a lot of stupid stuff. And it's like, come on now. Yeah. Shut up. Go somewhere and sit down. (laughs) I just, I don't know. I don't see how... I don't see how YouTubers who who don't do any research for themselves. I mean, of course, there are some. There are definitely some that do research and try to find it. But they don't have companies like uh, BioWare, um, Santa Monica, Naughty Dog. All that. They don't have all those companies on their fucking speed dial and mailing list who instantly sends them everything, all the news releases, all that stuff. And then is able to call them and call back and all that and get information and get updates and get clarifications. Like it's just, there's a reason IGN and GameSpot, Game Informer, all those websites are what they are and do, do what they do so well. Yeah. I definitely don't ever think it will be PewDiePie. I don't know. Like I don't like PewDiePie at all. Yeah. I don't understand the mass appeal. I think maybe he was one of the first people that did it. I think so too. Um, but I've watched his stuff and he's just not interesting. He's not all funny. All he does, yeah, all he does is scream and overreact to everything. Which and makes sense why the younger generation really, really likes him. 
Yeah. And I, I admit, like, I know he can't help it, but I hate his voice so much. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, good. I'm glad we're bringing that up. It's awful. <laughs> yeah, that's the main reason I don't like him. Like, I, I know it might seem offensive to some people, but I don't know. Just, like, his accent, it, it grates on me so hard. <laughs> and I thought it was a character at first, and that I hated it more back then. But, you know, now that I know he, it's just because he's, he's Norwegian? Swedish? Something like that. I don't, whatever nationality he is. I'm sorry to those people who I don't know, but I don't like your voices. <laughs> so now we're here to announce that next week we're actually bringing PewDiePie on for an interview. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd interview him. I wouldn't like it, but I'd, I'd, uh, I would interview him. <laughs> so just as a question, do you guys have people that you regularly listen to on YouTube? Not me, no. Not, not, no. not anybody who's not already in the industry doing something for specific websites that I already enjoy. No. Yeah. I like have when, that. when you say like people we listen to, do you mean like in terms of let's plays or do you mean like in terms of gaming news? Let's plays mostly. Um, no. I mean, Hunters. people doing PewDiePie work. Achievement Hunters is the only one I watch. Okay. That's legitimate. And um, Rooster Achievement Hunters is Rooster Teeth. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're a separate entity. Okay. Um, I actually, I'm going to give a shout out to the people I listen to, even though they absolutely don't need shout outs. Um, but I, I do watch a decent amount of Total Biscuit, who I think does oh, a, derp. an actual, like, decent job at doing news. Or, he, he does some good critiques on industry, and he's definitely someone who does look at stuff, um, compared to most of these other Let's Players. I'm going to interject for like two seconds. Sure. Uh, I also watched Total Biscuit, but I forgot about him because I haven't seen him put up anything recently. Has he put up anything? He puts stuff up like every day or other day, mostly a lot of Hearthstone stuff and um, introductions to games, but okay. it's a good way to visualize stuff. The other person I watch just for pure entertainment is Jack Septicai, um, who's a Let's Player from, I want to say Ireland. Um, and he does a lot of Oculus Rift stuff, but he's one of the only people I know who does a lot of Oculus Rift stuff, and that's mind blowing to me. I love watching people play those games. Yeah, um, I still love that video. Uh, did you guys see the video of the like a security guard that put on the Oculus Rift or during whatever? the roller coaster game? Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. Oh my god, it's so funny because he puts it on and you know he starts kind of like freaking out, like whoa. Whoa. And then he fucking like holds onto his seat and falls on his face. Like <laughs> he <laughs> tips the fucking chair over and just destroys his face. Yeah, oh, funny. it's so good. It's so good. Uh anyways. So let's move on. Yeah. yeah. Moving on. Next question. This one's from Dennis. Uh well we got a couple from Dennis. But this one, he says, Do you think that Nintendo can make a comeback with Smash Zelda, etc.? Or will they just fade uh, the console, the Wii U one, of course, out and release another one soon? I think we've been uh, discussing this, will Nintendo or can Nintendo make a comeback, like the entire time Mong's been an in- entity. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's been an ongoing discussion. Right. <sighs> yes, yes, they can, obviously. I, I, I think that's very... Uh, obvious with the success of Super Smash Bros. on 3DS, the continued success of the 3DS and Pokemon coming out, and the continued and anticipated excitement for games like Super Smash Bros. on Wii U and uh, Zelda next year. So, yeah. I mean, we know all they have to do to make the Wii U popular, as we said, is release a Pokemon on it. Yeah, exactly. That's all they have to do. Nintendo, why do you keep hurting us by not doing the thing you need to do? <laughs> See, I'm actually going the opposite way. I'm going to say that they cannot make it. I mean, th- there's certainly ways to frame success, and uh, Nintendo is going to do that in a way that, that of course, it's going to work. For instance, during GameCube, success was who is the most profitable, and Nintendo was, even though if they didn't sell as much. If you're comparing it to consoles sold and comparing that to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, then no. They're right. never going to make a comeback. That's but not going to happen. I think they're not, they're not going to make nearly a dent in their old market or the comparative gaming market, um, at least the one that they wanted to make. It's, um, it's never going to compare to the Wii, and it's never going to compare to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, but that doesn't mean that it can't make a comeback and be a success. It can sell... 
40 or 50 million units in six or seven years and be a success, even though that's three times less than the Wii sold. You know, like it can do that. Right. I don't know. I just think it has serious branding issues. And now that was the issue to begin with. And now oh, yeah. people are kind of getting what it is. But I still have people ask me. Stigma. I still have people ask me if it's just a, a controller for the Wii. So it's like you clearly the messaging is still wrong. Right. Nintendo is going to make a next iteration. I think that's where they're going to see some success because people are going to buy Nintendo stuff no matter what. There's crazy people out there. I'm one of those crazy people. Um, they're always, I think they're always going to find a way to stay solvent, um, financially. Yeah. But I think that as far as the Wii U goes, um, they're not going to find the success they want. They're going to find some sort of success, probably not what they're, what they want though. Um, and, uh, from then on, they're gonna, they're not coming out with a new one. They're not going to let it fade because that looks awful from customer service standpoint that people put down money for something and it doesn't get supported for at least four or five years. Yeah. Um, I think four years probably. That's we, probably the lifespan. Well, that only means two more years. Yeah. I'm, uh, I think I'm, <laughs> it's that, that's the, I think that's the minimum, at least two more years. Yes. Because it, we're not going to see Zelda until at least next fall or winter, you know, and that's the earliest we're going to see that. And you would think at that point they've probably got another Mario and another Donkey Kong planned, possibly, uh, you know, an upgrade or something for another major franchise. We still have Mario Party coming out. You know, there are a lot of games planned for the end of next year, and you would assume that are going to still be announced for the following year as well. Right. I, my, uh, uh, go ahead, Miles. Sorry. I was just going to say, that would be a very heavy-handed uh, launch lineup, though, if they, like, launch their next one with a Zelda, a Mario, and whatever else, Mario Party or something, Mario Kart. Just, like, I don't mean, like, in launch window. I mean, like, day one. God, that would be ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I, I think, personally, in my opinion, I think they're waiting uh to release that combination, possibly combination console. Um, and I think the new Nintendo 3DS is to help stall it, but I think they want to release both of those at the same time. I honestly, I just, I, 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 okay, these next, the games that are coming up in the next year and a half or so for Wii U, there's no way they're going to make any decisions or announce anything or, or be close to announcing anything until they give all of those games at least a year on the market. They've got to see how they do. You know, they, they're putting all their eggs in a basket, expecting these games to bolster, uh, Wii U sales. And if they don't, that's when they're going to admit defeat. But Speaking of which, time. uh, can I just mention a little bit of pressing news? Something that just got, um, recent news says Nintendo's looking for a lead graphic engineer for next gen consoles. Ooh. Um, so yeah, there's an advertisement out at the moment for a Nintendo technology development for Redmond, Washington. And looking for help developing uh, new technology. I wonder um, if that's uh, for the new 3DS, or if it's just for uh, modifying the Wii U, or it could be just to make things a little bit better in the Wii U. Like, or did, quality of life, did that, you, whatever that thing was. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, did you hear the whole thing about the uh, PlayStation 4 is... The, every PlayStation 4 being sold right now is actually a different model than the one we bought. No. Huh. Yeah. I like, didn't know that. They stealthily changed something. And I don't think, I don't think I ever saw a story that actually figured out what it was that changed. But the model number is now different. They, it started with the, I believe, Destiny white PS4s. Mm -hmm. And now everyone sold is that model number instead of the one that was ours, the original one. Hmm. I don't no. know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah, I have no idea what it is. They don't know why they changed it, what they updated in it, but there's something in there hardware-wise that's different. Shuhei, tell us. <laughs> something about our PlayStation sucks. <laughs> oh. For model, I wonder. I wonder if anybody has it. Um, yeah, it's a different skew. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> so let's go. Move on. Next question. All right. Uh, so, what gaming genre do you think will become a lot bigger during this current generation? Oh, uh, MMOs on consoles. Yeah, that seems to be a rising thing. Yeah, it's 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 expanding pretty quickly. 
there's Destiny. There's you know Final Fantasy fourteen is eventually one day going to make itself its way to PS4. It are, I'm going to say it already has, didn't it? Not not PS. There's something else I'm thinking about. Never mind. Oh, you're thinking of Elder Scrolls? Yes, that that was it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to say um, virtual reality games. Oh yeah. I, I really think... hope they die. <laughs> Wait, what? He I, hopes they I die. don't like virtual reality. I don't either. I just don't. Wait, no, I don't like peripherals. Of... That's what I don't like. That yeah. Not not. You so don't want to try the reality. Oculus? Uh, I've tried it. I wasn't impressed. You weren't impressed by the Oculus. No, I, I mean tried like it. it's it's an interesting idea, but it just it wasn't comfortable. It wasn't good. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a killer app for it one day, but right now I have no hopes for it or Morpheus, and I still think. Freaking Nintendo needs to give up on the Wii Wiimotes. <laughs> yeah, I agree with the Wiimotes. I, yeah, I, I just person. don't like peripherals. Again, I just don't. I like to sit on my booty and play my games with my controllers. They make me happy. Yep. You, we could do that still with the Morpheus or Oculus. I could, but it's not the same. I don't want to have to wear anything. Like it's something, invasive. Something on my head, something heavy on my face. Like I just, I don't know. I don't. I just, I don't know. If yeah, I like, wanted to wear something, I would wear glasses. <laughs> my ten hour gaming sessions will I'm not be so excited for this, so I, I just cannot identify with you guys at the moment. God, you're That's, weird, man. That I'm is all my for, mo- I'm what? all for the ad- advancement in technology and stuff and cool new changes and things like that. I just don't want to personally do it. I just like Miles said, I want to sit on my ass in my chair with my controller in hand, my traditional controller. With the directional pad and the analog sticks and the face buttons. Like, I want that, and I want to look at my TV and play it. That's it. That's all I want. I like having my TV right up there. I don't mind just my TV being much closer. Uh, it, it all depends on where they go with this technology. I might like it in the future. Who knows? But at the moment, I'm just like, uh, that is too much money for something that I will never use. I'm more about, like, the... Uh, Probably sort our sort our online virtual reality, where it's not like just a face mask, and you're all of a sudden you're like you're still in reality and moving around the room doing stuff. Like I'm more of a put me into this like sleep mode where it's in my head, and I just imagine, and I could move everything by just imagining it. Like, yeah, that's no, that's more like it. Dot hack and Sword Art Online have made me very wary of something like that. <laughs> Well, yeah, of course, but but uh, Terminator also makes me w- wary about AI and computers. So you're right. <laughs> okay. Moving on, the last question from Dennis: What military shooters? What mili- will military shooters still be this relevant at the end of the generation as they were during last gen? They're. I, I feel like they're not even all that relevant right now. Yes, like, it's well, the it's most a- relevant game on the market. Well, it depends on what your definition of military shooter is. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess it's not a military shooter. Yeah, because, like, if you're talking about Call of Duty, I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. Yeah, I think so. Too. Yeah, I think, like, Advanced Warfare is moving very far away from that, just because with all the technology and going futuristic and stuff, which, I, albeit it is technically a military shooter, but when I think of that, I think of, like, you know, four and above, not above, behind, or four and back, there we go. Yeah, the traditional military shooter, I think it's going to become irrelevant, um... It it already is becoming irrelevant, or is at this point, because we just don't see very many World War II shooters or anything like that anymore. And yeah. when they do release, like Sniper Elite, they didn't do very well. You know, it's just... Wait. What? Oh, my bad. When I said 4, 4 was Advanced Warfare, wasn't it? Or Call not Advanced... Uh, Call of Duty 4 Advanced Warfare. Or no, no, I mean... Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's the one I was talking about. Never mind, sorry. You said World War Two, and I thought I was... Uh... Talking about the wrong one. Oh. Anyways. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think, obviously, I do think that it's going to make a comeback. The industry is cyclical. And it, it will come back again and be relevant, but it first has to become completely irrelevant. So. I'm still waiting for 3D platformers. I want more Jack and Daxter. I guess that's that cyclical has too, absolutely so. nothing to do with military cyclical shooters. markets. I get, I guess things that There's, have been completely phased out. If we're talking about cyclical, then that's coming back first. 3D 3D platformers are back. Play Knack. <laughs> oh yeah, I gotta do that. Knack is awesome. <laughs> oh I, no, I I can't wait to play it. I just I've never gotten around to it. So good. I oh man. I want Jack and Dax to come back. Yeah, I would love to have Jack and Dax to come back. And, I'd be uh, okay with Rock Band coming back. 
Ratchet not, Clank. Not what me. is wrong with you? Again to the peripherals, just die. <laughs> uh, I still have my peripherals. They won't work, right. but so let's Actually, wrap wait. up this episode. <laughs> the new game releases this week on PlayStation Three. We have Samurai Warriors Four, Just Dance 2015, The Legend of Korra, uh, the game, The Walking Dead Season Two, F1 2014, The Voice. Uh, Need for Speed Rivals Complete Edition and Race the Sun. On PlayStation 4, we've got Shadow Warrior, which is apparently starring Brian Altano from IGN. No, oh. it doesn't actually, it's a lie. It just looks like him. Like, oh. go and look up the latest trailer for it, and it's got a dude with like a, like a, um, scruffy beard, um, almost no hair, you know, really shaved and, uh, fucking, uh, aviators. It looks just like Brian Altano. Um, anyways. And then also on PS4, Samurai Warriors 4, Just Dance 2015, Legend of Korra, The Walking Dead Season 2, Fluster Cluck. I love that name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Escape Goat 2. I love the scapegoat. Uh, Need for Speed Rivals Complete Edition and Race the Sun. And then on PlayStation Vita, we've got Samurai Warriors 4 and Race the Sun. All right. Should I put a little bit of a southern spin on these? You do whatever you have to do. All right, then. Well, let's go with a little southern on this. Uh, first know. game is uh, Xbox 360. We got Fantasia Music Evolved, uh, Just Dance 2015, uh, F1 2014, The Voice, which sounds like it could be like a really deep game, a singing game, or... <laughs> Something else I don't even know. It's singing uh, game. Yeah, but uh, hold on, is this really a southern accent? Uh, no, I'm trying to work into it, and it's not really coming. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can't, I can't really imagine this as southern. I don't. I'm trying to. I, I'm trying to slip into it. It's not. It sound like so. you were kind of trying to pull off the like 90 year old man also, and you were mixing <laughs> those two accents together. You're like, oh, oh, oh. 90 year old man is an accent. Well, yeah, you got the old, old voice. The <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the frail, the frail <laughs> okay. voice. It's like a right, dying I out. You, I got you. Uh, all right. So continuing, uh, there's Need for Speed Rivals Complete Edition, The Legend of Korra, The Walking Dead Season 2. That wraps up Xbox 360 games. Xbox One, you're looking at Shadow Warrior, Fantasia, Music Evolved. Those are not the same title. I just kind of slipped into it. Uh, <laughs> just Dance 2015, The Walking Dead Season 2, Need for Speed Rivals Complete Edition, and The Legend of Korra. And for PC, you guys get... A lot of stuff, just like every week. Uh, Dreamfall Chapters. I thought that was out already. Uh, Jagged Alliance Flashback. The Legend of Korra. Screen Cheat. That game actually looks really interesting. Uh, Time, say Rifters? Yeah, Time Rifters. Uh, Need for Speed Rivals. Complete Edition. Devil's Dare. Poltergeist. A Pixelated Horror. Uh, Battlefield 4. Premium Edition. <laughs> uh, Death Trap. Uh, pro, prop, prop, prop war 23? Prop Proper? hour 23? Proper? I don't know. No Whatever. Idea. Uh, P-R-O-P-H-O-U-R oh, I can't wait for the next one. 23. <sighs> okay. <laughs> you also get, uh, Squishy, the suicidal pig. Someone go help that pig. Uh, Sid, Ma- Sid Meyers, Civilization Beyond Earth. That game looks beautiful. Uh, Enforcer, Police Crime Action. That that is like the dumbest title I've seen in a long time. Uh, sign motion and hmm, Sproggy Wood, Sproggy Wood. I, I don't know. Screw you, PC gamers and your weird ass games. <laughs> <laughs> On the Wii U, we have Just Dance 2015. We also have The Voice, Shanti, and The Pirate's Curse, which is supposed to be fantastic, um, and Bayonetta 2, which is supposed to be even more fantastic. Uh, I kind of wish I was reviewing that. I chose not <laughs> to. Um, then moving on. Boobs. Yeah. No, it's because <laughs> I just <laughs> love the, 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 the surprise honesty in that was like. Yeah. That's yep, it. You yeah. Got you actually. No, I just have a thing for single moms. That's my oh, thing. Milfs. Anyway. Um, for 3DS, we also have Shanti and the Pirates Curse. Korg DSN 12. Now, are we sure that we did not accidentally slip a, uh, Music like peripheral in on this, did we? Are you, what are you talking about? Korg? That's like a brand that makes a lot of, uh, oh. like, mix, got what they call them, scratch tables and stuff like that and mixers. 
Maybe. And that just sounds like a product of theirs. Yeah, it says right here, Korg DSN-12 synthesizers and keyboards. <laughs> Who knows? But it is also it was, on the 3DS eShop. I was going to say, yeah, it's on 3DS. So... Yeah, um, and it's exactly what you would imagine. A, I'm looking oh. at it right now. It's exactly yeah, what you imagine it to be. Okay, it is a mixer for the 3DS. All right. Okay, moving on. Castle Conqueror EX. There's also Pokemon Art Academy and Fantasy Life. Yay, Fantasy Life. You reviewing Fantasy Life? Yeah, I'm pretty excited because it's level 5, you know? I have high hopes for what level 5 can deliver. Whether or not they will, uh, you know, never know. But, uh... Nino Kuni too. Nino Kuni, yeah. It's like, if it's anything, if it's got anywhere near the magic that Nino Kuni does, then it can't be too bad. But we'll see. So that wraps up episode 56 of the Middle of Nowhere Gaming Podcast. Um, man, 56. We're only, what, thir- or 43 episodes, 44 episodes away from 100? Yep. That's a, <laughs> only 44. Only 44. Only another 44 weeks, guys. And then can, everyone can, uh, get excited for 100. Um, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> as usual, we record on Tuesdays and release it later on Tuesdays. Um, you can email us at mong.podcast at gmail.com or at contact.mong at gmail.com. And you can find our Twitter account at mong.com, all spelled out mong and dot and com. <laughs> no ands in between, actually, though. There's none of that. And you can find our YouTube at youtube.com slash mong network and find us on Facebook, Tumblr, and Instagram. Uh, you can check out the website, middlenowheregaming.com, where you should send it to your friends. Send the website to everybody. Say, hey, go check this website out. They're awesome. They're located everywhere in the world and they write cool stuff and make cool podcasts and stuff. And you should say it like that, like word for word. And then, stuff. then you'll lose all your friends and then you'll have to rely on us. And then we'll talk to you because it's we're dark, cool like man. that. That's real dark. We we like we like you guys. We want to be friends with you. Anyways, and so if you really want to be friends with us, you can find us all on Twitter. Yeah, there you go. You can find me at Osborne underscore two thousand nine. You can find Lou at. Um, <laughs> you can find me at Lou Candaldi. I, I just had to reconsider that in my head though because I changed it for Halloween. Yeah. Um, I if you're looking up my name, it's Boo Candaldi. I was debating. Between Boo Kintaldi or Halloween Kintaldi. Ah, that's funny. Both were very awful puns. Yeah, they are. <laughs> you, should like change your, you should change your picture to reflect it, like a ghost Lou. Ooh. I think that picture is already pretty horrifying. Yeah, it right? is yeah, pretty it really horrifying. Is. Never mind. Well, I'm just going to make it the negative make of a it, speech. Like, so it's all black and Ooh, white. Yeah, I was going to say make a speech bubble and have you saying Boo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, and you can find Miles at... Furious Milk. Because he's furious at Halloween? Uh, whatever you want to rationalize it as. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we'll talk to you all again next week. Thank you for listening once again. And Mong! 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 Mong. Mong.